Okay, those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about how you can go about collecting your, uh, your studies and give you kind of a, a tip or strategy that you can use to help organize your uh, studies, organize your, uh, your research that you're finding uh, in, your, uh, in your literature review. So if we look at your template here, we're going to, again, look at this section where we, we need to have anywhere from two to four sections. Each section will be a level two heading. If you haven't already, go ahead and provide some sort of description for each of your headings that you plan to include, and you can do that by going to your respective uh, Google Docs and, and adding that information here. Some of you have done, most of you have done an annotated bibliography, and this is a very good um, step in the research process, one that you really need to do uh, for each of the references that you plan to use in your, uh, in your literature review. Once you've completed an annotated bibliography, then the next step is to go through uh, this process. It's this two-step process that I'm going to present here working with the research matrix. Now this first step is if you look in column A, you'll notice that you'll have an introduction and then you have sections one through four in this example along with two subsections under uh, section four. Again, you, you can have anywhere from two to four, but just as an example, you can list, instead of saying section one, you can actually put the phrase that represents the main idea of that heading and you can Put that here, and it might make it a little bit easier when you complete the rest of the matrix. If you look along the right-hand side of all of these sections, you'll see references 1 through 10. So if you have more references, you know that you need to have at least 10 for, for your literature review, but if you have more, then you'll expand out to the right uh, however far you need to, to go. But the idea is that each of your references will be here listed as a separate column. Then underneath, then you can use parentheses and then actually include the citation. The, parent, the, the parentheses here, you'll need to include the author's name, the year, and the page number. Page number is very important because it's possible that you might have the same reference more than once, and, but with a different page number. So a different part or a different section of the, um, of the article might appear in different sections. That's a possibility. But if you do this step, this is going to be a very quick and easy way to see how many references you have to support each of the sections that you're planning in your literature review. If you have a few sections with very few or maybe none, no uh, references at all, this table will, at a glance, give you that information. And uh, it might tell you that you may need to find, for example, more, more citations to support uh, one of your main sections over here. So once you've completed this step, this research matrix, then you can expand the same idea a little bit further uh, as you think about now an argumentative text. Remember that an argumentative text has three claims. It has an initial claim, counterclaim, and a rebuttal. So here, this is an easy way, I'm, and I'm using color codes here to distinguish between each of the three arguments. But I've expanded, as you've noticed here along the left, each of the sections now into paragraphs or topic sentences. So here you could easily put, instead of paragraph number one, topic sentence, you could actually put the topic or the phrase that represents the main idea of that topic sentence. And then along the right, you can include your citations. So here it's a little bit different. I've only included three here. You could maybe have four, probably not more than that. Because here you're going to indicate how many, ref how many citations you plan to include in each of the paragraphs. Of course, each of the paragraphs need to link back to the main section. And so this is going to give you kind of an outline view of how each of these claims, a claim being a topic sentence, and then the claim here being uh, one of the sections, how they all relate to each other. It also gives you at a glance you can see how you're logically presenting these ideas from your first paragraph to your fourth paragraph, for, for example. Now, again, this is just an example. You may have more paragraphs or less paragraphs, depending on how many you need to develop each of your sections. But the point here is that you include citations along with the appropriate color codes to indicate these different claims. 
green represents the initial claim. So you're probably going to start with initial claim in uh, most of your sections, just as I've done here in the first paragraph. Maybe I just have one citation that introduces a, an initial claim. In the second paragraph, maybe I start with another citation that offers support for a, uh, an initial claim. And then within the same paragraph, in paragraph number two, I offer a second citation now that offers a counter claim. The counter claim is to explain what's weak about the initial claim or what's wrong with it. So maybe Murray in this case is going to argue against what Sampson said in the second paragraph. And it's also possible that Murray says something that is um, the opposite or contrary to uh, the first citation in paragraph number one. So remember that if you've presented information in prior paragraphs, there's nothing wrong with presenting uh, counterclaims or rebuttals, information that supports what you've already mentioned in prior paragraphs. This also goes along with your analysis. You can analyze certainly evidence in your current paragraph, but you can also include a, and link it back to what you mentioned in prior, prior paragraphs. In this example, in paragraph number three, now we have uh, an, an additional citation that offers a rebuttal. The rebuttal is to say what's weak about the counterclaim. In this case, we actually have two citations. So maybe Murray said something very profound and deep, and maybe we need two different citations really to offer a counter or an argument against the counterclaim. So remember, the counterclaim is to explain what's weak about the initial argument. The rebuttal is to explain what's weak about the counterclaim. So in other words, an indirect, indirectly I'm saying that the rebuttal supports the initial claim indirectly because you're, you're not mentioning, it doesn't link directly to the initial claim, it actually just relates and discusses what's wrong with the counterclaim. So here you'll see different examples. If you look at section two, now, in paragraph number one, this is a different example. You actually have three citations that support an initial claim. Second paragraph, you have two citations that support a counterclaim. So th the second paragraph is basically going to talk about what's weak about what was said in the first paragraph. And then, paragraph number three, you're offering a rebuttal. In this case, one citation that's going to explain what's weak about what was said in paragraph two and so on. Paragraph three, here's another example. Right? So there are many different examples uh, that you can, uh, that you can uh, implement in your own writing. One way is not better than the other. It's not that you look at, let's say, this example and say, oh, this is going to be the best way to do all of my paragraphs. That's the wrong way to look at it. You need to look at what you're saying in each of the sentences, in each of your paragraphs. How are you developing your ideas in each paragraph? and then determine which of these options, and there are many more options, but how can I outline or lay out my arguments in a way that I provide a very strong and sound overall argumentative essay? This is the, the challenge. This is what we're going to be working on. This is the type of feedback that I'll, I'll, be, fee, uh, that I'll be providing you, and when I look through your uh, arguments, uh, this is what I'm going to be looking for. I'll be looking at this information over here, how you're organizing your ideas, both at the topic sentence level and also the uh, heading two level. And I'll also be looking at how you're organizing your levels, your headings here, in terms of your overall thesis statement. Remember that we, I think we talked a little bit about premises. Premises are just claims that lead to some conclusion. So these topic sentences collectively should reach some sort of conclusion that's represented in this section. Similarly, these three or four sections should collectively form some sort of conclusion that leads or relates back to your thesis statement. Right, this is how we're going to deal with our uh, writing a coherent essay, trying to make sure that at every level, at the paragraph level and at the section level, as well as the overall level of the entire literature review, that everything line aligns and supports each other and so this is I think a practical way that you can look at collecting your uh, your research studies both taking into consideration those studies that you've used in your literature review from last semester as well as new articles that you continue to read about this week and next week bring those together 
Follow step one first. After you've done the annotated bibliography, go through the step to make sure that you have enough references to support each of these sections. Then go to step two and think uh, similarly now in terms of an overall argument. If at this stage if you still feel that you have not been able to find certain references, then we need to have a discussion. We need to see if we're looking in the right place, if we're using the right search terms, and if need be, is it going to be necessary perhaps to modify slightly some of these section headings or perhaps even your overall thesis and or possibly your research questions. All of this relates to your research questions and your thesis statement. So if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and include your, your thesis statement here. Go ahead and include whatever you have uh, of, uh, from your literature review here in this part. And at the bottom, you can include your research questions here in this where I've got it highlighted towards the end of your literature review. Anytime I provide feedback regarding your literature review, I need to see your research questions, what you're considering and also your thesis statement. I need to be able to see both of those in order to provide you better feedback about how you're going about organizing your literature review. So I hope this helps. If you want me to look at anything, again, I think the easiest thing is to leave comments in your document. Send me an email via class, uh, Google Classroom, and I'll be happy to look at it. Otherwise, we can discuss it, obviously, in our weekly tutoring sessions. Good luck, and I'll see all of you in your next tutoring session.